I've made some pretty cool projects with the rotary axis that I built about four years ago, but lately I've noticed some backlash issues, so I decided it was time for an upgrade. I looked on Amazon and I found this four jaw 100 millimeter fourth axis and tailstock from Rat Motor. It seemed like a solid unit and the machining on it was very well done. It has a 6 to 1 gear reduction and a 4 wire stepper motor. So all I have to do is add a Molex connector and I should be good to go. Now where did I put those Molex connectors? Ah, there they are. Before I assembled the whole Molex connector, I just crimped the pins onto the end of the wires and stuck them in the other half of the cable just to check to make sure the wiring was correct. Once I tested it and found out that it was spinning okay, then I wrote down the, the pin combination so that I could push it into the Molex connector. Once I had the Molex connector assembled, it was time to connect it again to the other cable and then check it one more time just to make sure I had it right at this point. And it looks like it's spinning fine. There's only just a hair over two and a half inches on this so I decided I would make some plywood spacer blocks to get it raised up a little bit. I decided to get a little more height on this unit I'd make some spacer blocks. I made two spacer blocks out of half inch plywood and two spacer blocks out of three quarter inch plywood. So I could put a half inch and a three quarter on the tailstock and the headstock and that would give me an additional height of about an inch and a quarter. After the spacer blocks were all cut and sanded, I just needed to glue them up and then it was time for a sandwich while the glue dries. I kind of went back and forth on how I was going to mount these things, but since I had some extra T-track, I decided I'd just use the CNC to cut a 6 by 40 inch long board and then mill a half inch pocket just to keep the T-track in line. And here's the completed setup with the spacers mounted in it as well. I don't really need them for this small a piece but I wanted to go ahead and see how hard it was going to get to line up and it was a little difficult. I had to fiddle around a little bit. You can see I've got a 60 degree V-bit in there to help me get stuff lined up. But uh, in the end it came out okay. I'm getting ready to do a test cut here. This is just a piece of 2 before cut about approximately an inch and a half square. And I'm just doing a rounding tool path over here just to kind of test the, the rotary axis. And I have to say I'm very happy with it. It's very solid, very smooth. And uh, other than me having to fiddle around with it a little bit to get it lined up just right, it, uh, it works very well. So I'd feel pretty confident in recommending this to anybody that's looking for an economical uh, rotary axis for their CNC. If you're not already a subscriber, you may want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. And while you're at it, hit the little bell. That way you'll get notifications every time I upload a new video. I've got lots of projects planned for this new rotary axis and that's one reason why I didn't mind spending the money for this upgrade. If you'd like more information about this rotary axis, check out the link below in the video description and feel free to leave any questions or comments. As always, thank you very much for watching.